Apple and Fortnite have been battling it out for the past couple months now, and if you haven't been following the drama closely, you've probably lost track of where it's at. So in this video, I'm going to break down what exactly has been going on between Fortnite and Apple so you can understand the situation as it stands today. Now I should mention, there's new information coming out about this case every single day. And I can only explain the drama that's happened thus far. So stick around for a later video. Make sure you're subscribed because I probably will create a follow-up explaining what's happened from today on. Now, if you don't know, Fortnite is a game that's available on many different platforms like Xbox and PlayStation and PC, but it also is available on iOS. And that's what the case is related to against Apple. Now, I should mention this isn't the first time Apple and Epic have interacted with each other. In fact, they've had a very healthy relationship since 2010, because that's when Mike Capps, then president of Epic Games, demoed something on stage during an Apple event called Project Sword, which was running on Apple's new iPhone 4. Now, of course, Apple wanted Epic Games to demonstrate this graphics performance, and Epic wanted to promote their new gaming app. Now, the Project Sword demo would later become the game Infinity Blade, which you probably have heard of since it was one of the most popular gaming apps on the iPhone of 2010. But there was actually a second time when Epic Games appeared at an Apple event, and that was in the 2015 Worldwide Developers Conference. A man named Billy Bramer took the stage and demoed Fortnite for the Mac. And it's worth noting that back in 2010 and 2015, Epic Games never had any issues with App Store guidelines, and those guidelines haven't changed since the inception of the App Store in 2008. It wasn't until this year, 2020, when Epic emailed Apple asking for exceptions to their guidelines. And I'm going to take you through what those emails said. On June 30th, the CEO of Fortnite, Tim Sweeney, sent an email to Apple executives. And in that email, he said, we would like to offer consumers the following features. One, a competing payment processing option other than Apple payments without Apple's fees in Fortnite and other Epic Games software distributed through the iOS App Store. So they're asking to implement their own payment system that customers can use to buy virtual currency in Fortnite and other Epic Games. That way, they don't have to pay the 30% fee to Apple. And the reason why this is such a ridiculous request is because there isn't a platform in existence like the eShop on the Nintendo Switch or the Google Play Store and the App Store that doesn't take a cut of all sales made in that marketplace. Because operating an App Store or a video game downloading store is not free. It costs money to maintain, it costs money to develop, it costs money to update, it costs money to create the tools that developers need to create those apps in the first place. In fact, Epic has their own licensing program where they allow developers to use their Unreal Engine in their gaming apps and they take a cut, 15%, from all sales made using their Unreal Engine. So it's kind of hypocritical for them to come to Apple asking for a 0% cut. But it doesn't stop there. They also say they want a competing Epic Games Store app available through the iOS App Store and through direct installation that has equal access to the underlying operating system features as the App Store itself has. So they're really asking for two things, their own payment processor, which is ridiculous and would never happen because Apple would have no way of taking a cut, but they also want to create their own app store on iOS. Now, both of those requests obviously violate Apple's guidelines, so Apple responded to this email on July 10th with a letter from their lawyer, and it's a six-page response going on about the purpose of the app store, and I'm going to read a little bit from that email now. They said, the App Store is not simply a marketplace. It's part of a larger bundle of tools, technologies, and services that Apple makes available to developers. 
Epic has made great use of Apple-provided tools such as Test Flight, VOIP, stickers, iCloud document storage, AR kit, messages extension, replay kit, and push notifications. Also, when Apple launched Metal for Mac at WWDC in 2015, Mr. Sweeney's colleague stood on stage and explained how Metal revolutionized graphic design and enabled developers like us to create richer 3D worlds. So it's really interesting that Apple includes this because basically they're saying, look, you've been using these tools to create some of your most popular games ever because we gave you access to our user base, one of the biggest in the world. We gave you access to our tools, some of the best in the world. And now you're saying you have a problem with paying your fair share back to us. Now Epic responded to that email on July 17th. And in that email they said, if Apple someday chooses to return to its roots, building open platforms in which customers have freedom to install software from sources of their choosing, and developers can reach consumers and do business without intermediation, then Epic will once again be an ardent supporter of Apple. They also mentioned we'll continue to pursue this as we have done in the past to address other injustices in our industry. Now, I'm not sure what they're referring to in terms of other injustices that they've fought against. The only thing I came up with in my research was that a company called Silicon Knights sued Epic for using code that Silicon Knights claimed as their own, but in fact, they stole from Epic in the first place. So Epic countersued and won, and then Silicon Knights went out of business. I'm not sure if that's the injustice they're referring to, but I couldn't find any more information about that. Also, it's interesting that they say if Apple someday chooses to return to its roots. I'm not exactly sure what roots they're referencing. Um, if they're talking about Mac OS, it's kind of irrelevant because the iOS platform is completely different. The iPhone is a completely different product than the Mac. And if they're talking about the roots of iOS, it's never changed. The rules of the App Store have never changed. Those guidelines have been the same since the beginning of the App Store in 2008. Now, when things really hit the fan was on August 13th. That is when the PR campaign from Epic began. That is when Epic Games implemented a direct payment system into Fortnite. They warned Apple that they were going to do it. They did do it. Apple expected it to happen. And then once they did it, an hour later, Apple shut down the app. They blocked it from the App Store. And what's interesting is that when they implemented this payment option, they showed the price of the V-Bucks, which is the virtual currency in Fortnite, as a 20% discount from the typical price, which includes Apple's cut. And they were saying to customers, look, if Apple doesn't charge us 30% and they take away their cut completely, you'll be saving 20% on this virtual currency. What's funny is that they didn't discount it by 30%. So Epic Games is still coming out ahead 10% if Apple were to reduce their cut to zero. Now I should mention, they didn't only do this on Apple's App Store, they also did this in the Google Play Store, and Google had the same response of taking the app down. Everything that's happened to Epic in this whole process is part of Apple's guidelines. They have not targeted Epic in any unfair way, except one, and that was Apple tried removing the Epic International account on the App Store which includes the Unreal Engine that's used by other developers creating apps for iOS. And that's unfair because Apple would be targeting developers that really had nothing to do with this case in the first place. So the judge overseeing the lawsuit told Apple, you cannot ban the Unreal Engine in general because other developers are relying on that technology. Now also on August 13th, Fortnite released this video called 1980 Fortnite. And it was a parody of Apple's sort of iconic 1984 ad where they portrayed IBM as this evil big brother. And Epic is trying to turn this around on Apple and say, today, Apple is the big brother. They're the monopoly. They're the anti-competitive company that's oppressing everybody else. Uh, Epic Games also made blog posts Twitter posts, all this social media PR 
telling people to fight against Apple, to join the movement, to hashtag free Fortnite. And what's really interesting to consider is companies sue each other all the time. Uh, Apple just recently sued a company called Prepared, where they used a pear logo and Apple thought it looked similar to the Apple logo, which I don't think it does. But those lawsuits happen behind the scenes. So the question is, why is Fortnite making this so public? And I think the answer is, they know they're going to lose in the court of law, but they think they can win in the court of public opinion. And what that can do is, even though Apple won't legally be bound to allow Fortnite back on the App Store or to give in to some of their demands, Fortnite can turn users on Apple in a way that will force Apple's hand to compromise on their demands or else maybe hardware sales will go down. There will just be a bad relationship with their users, something that Apple cherishes very, very deeply. And I mean, the, the PR effort in this case cannot be understated. I mean, Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic said, at the most basic level, we're fighting for the freedom of people who bought smartphones to install apps from sources of their choosing, the freedom for creators of apps to distribute them as they choose, and the freedom of both groups to do business directly. What's interesting is users aren't entitled to that. Developers aren't entitled to that. It's something Apple chooses to do on their platform or to not do. And part of the reason why iOS is so much more secure than Android is because it's a closed operating system. And having a closed operating system is not illegal. That's Apple's choice. And keep in mind, iOS is not licensed to other manufacturers. So when Apple makes a decision about iOS, it's only affecting their own hardware. So in a way, Apple is not controlling a market. They're not controlling the smartphone market when they make a decision about their products or their platforms. They're only affecting their own ecosystem. There was also an accusation Apple made about Epic saying they wanted a special side deal just for them. And Tim Sweeney actually pushed back on this statement. And he said, Apple's statement is misleading. You can read my email on Apple's filing, which is publicly available. I specifically said in Epic's request to the Apple execs, we hope that Apple will also make these options equally available to all iOS developers. Now it's true, he did say that in his email, but it was in, I think, the second to last paragraph. And this is probably a six paragraph email to Apple. And in the first two paragraphs is where he outlines his demands. And those two demands are what I already mentioned. He wanted Epic to have their own payment processor to bypass Apple's. He wanted Epic to have their own app store on iOS. He never mentions any other developers having access to those capabilities except for Epic. Now what's also interesting about this situation is that there are other companies supporting Fortnite in, the, in their effort. Companies like Spotify, companies like Microsoft, who also have an interest in Apple either removing or reducing their 30% cut in the App Store. The only company that's coming to Apple's aid probably expectedly, is Google, since they also operate their own app ecosystem where they also charge 30%. Now, on August 26th, Epic Games confirmed that the next season of Fortnite will not be available on iPhone, iPad, or Mac because of this legal battle with Apple. And that has frustrated users. The question is, who are users getting mad at? Are they getting mad at Fortnite for breaking the rules and getting their app removed? Or are they mad at Apple for oppressing Fortnite and removing their app? And what's interesting is people are kind of on the fence about this. Most people watching videos about the topic are saying, look, these are both two private corporations who are inherently greedy. They inherently want to make as much money for themselves as possible. But it's clear Epic got themselves in this situation and they're turning it around on Apple as if they were the antagonizers, which they weren't. The entire time, Apple has just been following their own guidelines, which have been the same since 2008. Now, people have been telling me in live streams and sometimes in the comment sections of videos, why do you think Apple is getting so upset about Epic wanting them to reduce their 30% cut? 
don't you think that's a good conversation to have? And I would say, yeah, that is an appropriate conversation. Is 30% too much? I don't know, maybe it is. But that's not the conversation Epic is having. What Epic is trying to do is completely remove Apple's cut, and that's not all. They also want their own app store. Two things that are obviously never going to happen on iOS and would never happen on any app marketplace in the world. Now, the legal case as it stands today is that the judge has granted a temporary restraining order, which again prevents Apple from blocking Epic Games access to development tools for its Unreal Engine, but she is not forcing Apple to allow Fortnite back onto the App Store. And I suspect the final ruling in September will be that Epic Games, you broke the guidelines that you agreed to in the first place, that you were okay with since 2010, and uh, it's your own fault that Apple enforced the rules and banned you from the store. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. I'm really interested to hear what the community on YouTube really feels about Apple's and Epic Games' own actions. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe because I will probably be creating an update video about this topic in the future, and I'll see you in the next video.